Hey everybody, the new Crute are out and we think these models are great. And so when we got our set, we took a look at it and thought, could we make our own Crute war shape to lead a hunting pack? And so we started looking around for some inspiration and some ideas and one came out from quite an unexpected source, which is Azog from the Hobbit films. Now it's quite strange, but actually this character does translate quite well into a Crute-like character being like a hunting warlord. And so in this video, what we're gonna do is show you how you can take inspiration from an unexpected source to create a completely unique character for your army. We hope you enjoy Enjoy it, let's get to it. So before we start painting the model, what we should do is take a look at it, because I've done some minor conversions just here to really appeal to the character. The basis for it is one of the long quills from a regular Crute Carnivore squad, but I've made a few additions to it, which you can see right here. I started out by building him with a knife arm and then replaced the knife with the iconic mace. And I had a look through the bits box and found one that I think is a good representation of Azog's mace. This is actually from a Chaos Warrior from Age of Sigmar. And what I did was just cut away the knife blade and just trimmed away the handle a little bit, put a pin through, and then put the mace on either side just there and then green stuff in the gap just to fill that in. So once that's painted, you won't see the green stuff at all. Meanwhile, that knife blade has then become the blade on the stump of his arm, which I just cut there just around the wrist and glued that underneath there. And I think that's a nice approximation of the blade that Azog has too. Now, he is, of course, standing on a big rock because it is a hero. This is a resin one that I got from Gamers Grass, and I used this one because I was able to trim it down a bit flatter with a knife so that he'd stand a bit more stably on there. And then I just filled in the gaps with some green stuff, which, once it was dry, I just carved to be a little bit more angular so it just matches the surroundings. Stuck on a few rocks too, just to help blend everything in, but you can see that makes him look nice and imposing. The final thing I then did was to add the iconic scars. So you can see we've got one down the side of his face just there. There are two in his chest. There's another one on the side of his head. He's got to have some scars if he's going to look like Azog, of course. And so with that done, he's now ready to be painted. Now, of course, we have to go for that pale orc color scheme that Azog has, which means he's got to be an off-white kind of color scheme. So that means I'm going to go for a very light undercoat. I'm going to go for some Wraithbone spray here. So I'll go outside and spray him. When we come back, we can start painting him. Here we have the model with that undercoat completely dry. And I always like this stage because all those different colors that we had from the various materials that have gone into the conversion are now all nicely blended together and it looks like a proper unified miniature. So well, with the stage reached, what we can do is start painting it. And when it comes to Crute, what I like to do is begin by painting all of their skin because that consists of the main part of them. And once that's done, then turn our attention to the smaller details. So with that in mind, what I'm gonna go for here is a nice pale color to be like, well, pale Crute really is what we're making here. So what I've got is an ivory color. I've got some ivory tusk and I'm going to roughly base coat this across all the skin. So to do that, I have a medium base coat brush here from Citadel and all I'm gonna do is, as usual, make sure that paint's thin down on the palette and nice and smooth, and then start base coating all the flesh without worrying about any of the details at the moment. So just making sure I get all that skin and not concerning myself with any of those straps because we'll come back to those later on. With that base coat done, I'm now gonna add in some shading, but I don't wanna make this too dark here so as to lose that pale appearance. So what I'm gonna do is actually create a wash by using a sort of dark ivory color, but Griffin Claw for this, and I'm gonna mix it with some Lamy Medium to give it the properties of a wash. So what we need to do is set it up on the palette. Now to do this, I'm gonna go for a size two brush here from Adsopus. So sort of a medium to large brush. And the reason for that is when I'm applying it onto the model, I don't wanna swamp it with too much of this so as to obscure any detail because this is gonna be thicker than a regular wash. So we just need to bear that in mind as we apply it. So I've got plenty of that medium there on the palette. So I'm just gonna bring some of the Griffin Claw into it and mix it together to create our version of this wash there. So there we go, nice and thin down and then just make sure I'm not putting on too much at once to avoid that swamping. And then it's time to apply it over all the flesh. So I'm just gonna start painting it on, letting it run into all those recesses and just getting that shading there with that detail now popping out nicely. And once it's on, I'm gonna give it about half an hour to dry. That mix is now dry and you can see it's given us some contrast there between the light and the dark, but it hasn't made things too dark, which is ideal because now what we need to do is just re-establish that pale color. So I'm gonna go back to Ivory Tusk for this and layer it on this time. So I'm using a size zero brush now, so a small to medium brush really, an ideal size for this sort of thing. And with it, I'm gonna make sure the paint on the palette is slightly translucent there, so we just see through it and then going to start applying it onto the raised up flatter areas on the body, which is generally going to be following the muscles and things. I can see on the legs there's good examples of this where we're looking for flat areas such as here. I just want to follow along those, but whenever it gets to a recess such as around these spines, just be careful not to drop into those parts. So this way I'm retaining that definition that we got from that shading, but also just cleaning up the flesh and getting it ready for a highlight.
I've finished doing that layering now, and so you can see the skin is looking a bit cleaner. And there's one thing I just want to point out, I actually missed out doing his lower beak just there. And that's because on Crute you often get it a little bit dark around there, so it looks like it's sort of hardened flesh essentially to create that beak. So that's why I've just avoided doing that bit. But with all that done now, what I'm going to do is just pick out those scars to make them a little bit more pinkish reddish. And so for this I'm going to use some Asmodeus red, so a sort of deeper red, almost a maroon here. What we're going to do is thin it right down and run it into those recesses for the scars to help them pop. Now to do this, it's a matter of going for the smallest brush possible because the scars are so small. So I'm using my size double zero here. You see I'm just getting plenty of water on the palette, really diluting that paint so it's right thinned down like this. So it's quite inky. I'm just going to remove the excess off on the brush so it doesn't swamp the model. And then load it fresh and we're ready to go. And so I'm going to look around carefully now for where those scars were that I just etched in earlier on when building the miniature. Let's run this into those areas. So for example, down here, just going across the eye. There we are, those scars have been painted in, so now it's time to do some highlighting on the flesh. And here I'm going to go for a near white. I've got some trooper white for this. And what I'm going to do is apply it onto all the parts that stand out, so all the edges and ridges. So for that reason, I'm going for a really fine brush here. I'm right down to that size double zero once more. I'm just going to make sure this is nicely thinned down and under control on the brush, and then start looking for any part that really stands out on the flesh. So for example, if we take a look down at the leg once again, we've got things such as the knee, where I'm just going to go across the top of it there just to help that pop a little bit on this ridge down there. We've got a few wrinkles coming down the sides, so we want to make sure we get those. And then we've got the smoother areas of muscle and things. So on the front of the leg, we can do a highlight for on the ridge there. And if we look around the back of it, you can see the muscles, but we just want to follow the crest of them as they'd catch the light. So areas such as just there and just there around the sound down here, and just areas like that to help it stand out a little bit more. Same's gonna be true as we get to the face, where I'm gonna be careful around the beak once again to make sure we just get that sharp ridge in the center so it looks nice and sharp, so just there, for example. And then as we encounter those scars, I'm gonna highlight around those two. So on this one, for example, I'm just gonna follow it down the side just here. With that skin now highlighted, there's just one more thing that I want to do on there, which is to add some little hints of like a pinkish tone on there, just like you see on Azog. And to do this, what we can do is use a red wash, but heavily thin it down to really take the strength out of it. So I'm going to use some Hillian red wash for this, and I'm going to dilute it using Lamia medium. And what we need to do is set it up on the palette. I'm using my small brush for this, so still the size double zero. And what I'm going to do is just get plenty of this medium next to the wash there on the palette, and then we can bring them together. So I'm going to go quite far on the medium to make it very weak. Bring them together there like that, and so we've got the sort of tone that we need. And with that mixed together, just make sure you only put on a small amount of once when you're doing this, because what we want to do is pick one area at once, and then sort of dilute it actually on the miniature so it fades into the surroundings. So for example, if we get some of this ready, if we look at some of these scars, such as this one going down the side of his face here, I'm just going to paint it over this area, so just around there, so we get that pinkish hue. And then whilst the paint's still wet, I'm just going to quickly wash my brush, and just make sure it's damp with just a little bit of water left on it, and just use that to smudge it around the outside. So this way, the wash fades out into the surroundings. So I'm going to do this around the scars, and also I'm just going to get the underside of the eyes as well. So we're looking at the lower eyelid, just in areas such as here. With that wash now dry, we've got that little pinkish hue appearing in various details there in the skin. And you can see I've taken it a little bit further too, adding some just on the stump right there. And I've just added a few little bits and pieces around the various spines coming out of his body and on the underside of his feet, just for a little bit of color in there. And with that done, it's now time to move on to surrounding details. And I'm gonna start out with a nice warm brown here. And it's gonna be for things like the spines and one or two other little parts as well. I'm gonna use some Noble Steed Brown for this. And to apply it, I'm gonna go for my size zero brush, which I think is quite a good size for the various parts that we're doing here. Though when you're painting crew, just bear in mind some of those spines can be quite small and tricky to get to, so just change brushes as you need to. But with the paint thinned out, it's time to start looking for these parts and picking them out. And the obvious spines are, of course, the ones coming out the back of his head, so we just want to get these ones around here, just blocking all those in at this stage, but also just keeping an eye out for the smaller ones, such as these ones down here. And I'm also going to pick out a few of the little details on here as well, just like the little bits and pieces and things. For example, the grip of his pistol around the back just here. And there we are, you can see the various details I picked out with that shade of brown. And so now what we can do is move on to a number of other base coats on the miniature. And I'm aiming to apply a whole host that can all share the same color wash at the same time. So this will mean a nice efficient way of shading all these pieces together. And this is going to start out with the other leather details, which I'm going to pick out in brown once again, but a different color this time. I'm going to be using some scorched earth for this one. With that done, it's then time for some black details. And here I'm going to use some Death Reaper that we can shade down later for some shading on there. And then it's time for the metallics. I'm going to start out with the silver where I'm using 
Surcoat Silver, and then I'm going to do some brass with some Overlord brass. But we're going to start out with that brown leather, and in this case I'm going to be using some Scorched Earth, applied once again using my size zero brush for the main part of it. Here I'm looking for all the remaining leather straps that appear on the miniature, such as this one that goes around the front of the body I'm looking at just here, where it's a matter of just being really careful and taking your time with details like this when you're painting next to white details. You don't want to catch them with this colour, so just be really careful and neat around areas such as this. Next up it's time to move on to a black, so here I'm using some Death Reaper, and this is going to be for the claws both on the feet and his hand. Next up it's time to move on to base coating the metallics, and I'm going to start out with the silver using some Surcoat Silver. Now this is obviously going to be for the weapons, so for example the blade just down here, but I'm also going to be picking out the armour with this colour, because in the films that's what Azog has as well. And finally I'm going to pick out some small trinkets and details using some Overlord Brass, such as this bracelet just here. And with that all those details are now base coated, so we can move on to that wash which is going to be on all these new colours that we've added since we did the skin, and in this case a dark brown wash is perfect, so I'm going to use some battle mud wash in this case. And to apply it, for the most part I'm going for that size zero brush, that medium to small one, but when it comes to a model like Crude there are a lot of very small details in there that you have to be careful with with the application of a wash like this, so, so it's a good idea to have a small brush on hand too. And when you're getting this ready on your palette just remove excess paint because you don't need loads, because the more you have on there the more likely it is to run onto the flesh that you're trying to avoid you see. So just use the palette to help gauge how much is on there, and when you start to apply it pick an area that's a distance away from the skin, so for example on this band that we've got just here, I'd apply it right in the middle and then use that as a starting point to start pulling that wash around, this way you have control of it by the time you reach the skin. So along there for example. That wash is now completely dry, and with that done I'm now going to move back to some of the metallics just to brighten them up a little bit, because here what I want to do is make the cutting edges look a bit sharper, and also give a slightly hammered appearance to the armour details that we've got on there. And to do this we'll start out by doing a bit of layering, and then I'm going to stipple it with a dry brush, but we'll start out with the layering. So Surcoat Silver is the colour I'm using here, and I'm going to do this using a size zero brush first of all for the layering, and here I'm specifically looking for sharp blades to give the impression that they're really sharp, you see. So make sure that paint's all thinned out and ready, and then we can identify these areas, such as this knife that he's got in his arm, and the idea here is just to apply it thinly over the cutting edge, but not going onto the flat bit. So just along there, so you see by this way, we get a really nice contrast between the sharp part and the side of that knife. Now once that's done, I'm also going to do a little bit of stippling on the armour to give that sort of battered iron appearance that Azog has in the Hobbit films. And to do this, what you need is a newer dry brush. So I've got a small one here from Citadel, and the reason why it's important that it's newer is so that the bristles are keeping a fairly good chisel point there, because we need that accuracy as we apply it, so as to avoid other details. Now to do this, just get some of the paint on the tip of your brush, then get some tissue and use it to work it into the bristles there like that, so just move your way along until you're getting about this sort of strength of application on the paper there, so quite weak. And then all you do is just start poking it at the armour plating. So this is where it's important to have that fairly narrow frontage there on the bristles so that you can keep it under control and just focus it on the armour whilst avoiding the surrounding details. And all you do is just keep on poking like this until you're happy with the result. Now that's done, we've got a nice shiny finish on the blades, you can see that on his knife arm and also on the mace, and we've got the nice texture on there on the armour. And with that done, we're now going to go on to the other metallic because I want that to be a little bit shinier too, so I'm going to go back to some Overlord Brass here and do the same sort of thing with the layering, just reapplying to those parts that were originally were base coated with this colour, but quite specifically looking for raised areas now. So I just need to get a little bit of this ready, and I'm using the size zero brush once again for this, and it's a matter of just going back to those parts that were originally painted with this colour and just focusing on areas that stand out, such as along here on this bangle. And with that the brass is nice and shiny once more as well, so it's time to move on to highlighting the miniature, and here I'm going to start out with that brown that we used on the spines, so what we need is a brown that's lighter than the one that was originally used, in this case dry rust brown is going to work nicely, and to apply it I'm going to go for a fine brush now, right down to my size double zero, because here we're just looking to pick out the raised details that really stand out, and basically just exaggerate them a little bit more by putting this lighter colour on them. So just need to make sure the paint's thinned and ready, so there we go, and just make sure there's not loads on the brush, because we don't need loads and loads here, this is already aided in the fine application by just removing the excess there like that, and then we can start looking for these features and picking them out. 
Now the spines are the obvious ones here and to get these all you need to do is just approach the side of your brush and just skim along them rapidly there like that. And what will happen is you'll get a fine line just picking out the raised texture of these spines, highlighting them really quickly and really easily. There's also some other textures that I painted with this colour such as the grip here on the mace. In this case I'm just looking for the edges where we get a bit of definition in the detail as it comes to the edge of it. So for example along there, just a matter of running along that edge with a line of this colour. With those parts highlighted we can now move on to the next shade of brown and in this case what I'm going to be using is some ancient forest and to apply it again I'm going to go for the same brush that size double zero once more because the application here is going to be just the same as what we just did on that previous shade of brown. Again just make sure the paint's nicely thinned and under control and then it's time to start looking for the ridges and edges that stand out. So for example on this strap across the body just here I'm going to go around the outside of it with the tip of the brush just skimming along to get that light colour to help just mark out the edge of it right there and whenever some of the texture stands out with wrinkles and creases it's going to pick that out with the tip of the brush as well. So for example just down here. Now the leather's done we can move on to highlighting those remaining colours on there and we'll start out with the black. Here what we need is a dark grey so I'm going to use some dungeon stone grey and then it's time for the metallics. We'll start out with the silver with a really bright silver. I'm going to use some mithril blade here and then for that brass colour I'm actually going to use a platinum so I'm going to use some platinum crown for this. Now finally there's a few little stitches in the model and this we can pick out with a bone colour so I'm going to use some skeleton legion here. But first of all what we need to do is highlight the black. So I'm going to use dungeon stone grey applied again with my small brush still using the size double zero. Just need a very small amount of this because these claws are all very small. Just make sure you have a tiny bit on your brush and then on each one we just need to paint a line going down the top of it essentially. So if we look at these ones on the feet it just means using the side of the brush just to skim down a little bit there like that. Next up it's time to highlight all the silver so here I'm using some mithril blade and I'm looking to go around all the sharp edges of these details so just following along that edge there and using the side of the brush just to go along there and on the armour we can also add a little bit more life to it by doing some scratches on there and to do this all you need to do is just flick a few little lines running across it so for example just down there. With that done it's then time to move on to highlighting the brass and here I'm using some platinum crown. It's just a matter of just picking out the areas where the light would catch. So for example on the spangle it's just across the top in the middle along here. And then finally using Skeleton Legion I'm just going to pick out some of the stitches that appear in the model. So for example these three just along here. And with all those details now highlighted it's time to move on to the finishing touches and here we're going to start out by painting those eyes. Now in the Hobbit films Azog has these piercing blue eyes so we thought it'd be cool to represent that here as well. So what I've got is an icy blue. I've got some gigawatt blue and to apply it when you're doing eyes on a model like this you definitely want your finest brush with the finest tip on it. So I'm using a size double zero here and all I'm going to do is just make sure the paint's thinned down so it's a little bit runny but not so inky that's going to flow out of control. Just about this sort of consistency here which makes it easier for it to settle where we want it to go. So with that prepared then just make sure you remove the excess paint, bring the bristles to a nice point and then brace your hands as steady as possible and gently move in from this angle just to pick up that raised little bump there of the eye. And there we are, the eyes are painted so now I'm going to move on to the final detail which is going to be to add a marking onto some of the armour, sort of like those tribal markings that you see on the crude. And for this I thought it'd be cool to go for a nice bright red, sort of evoking Mordor essentially. So what I'm going to use here is some demon red and to apply it I'm sticking to that small brush because this is just going to be some simple free-handed patterns on here. So we just need to make sure this is thinned and ready and then we can start applying this to the model and generally these patterns it's kind of follow the shape of the armour plating so that's what I'm going to do here. So we're looking at this shoulder right here my plan is to follow vaguely the outer side of it so I'm just going to start along here to turn the model so I'm painting in a mostly vertical way and I'm just going to put a line going along here just to mark out where it's going to start so along there like that and then I'm going to bring it up the centre of the shoulder. So I'm just going to turn the model again making sure I'm painting in a vertical manner so I can see clearly where things are going. I'm just going to add in a design just here and then just really build it out from this point here with a few little swirls and things just to add a bit more decoration to the miniature. Now with this done it's then time to do the base and in this case I think I'm going to go for a grasslands base which is going to suit the model nicely so all the rocks going to be a dark cold grey with some grass underneath.
And with the base now fully painted, the Pale Croot is complete and ready to lead his hunting pack in search of, well, let's face it, probably 13 Votan, a Rattling Sniper and a Psychic Inquisitor, wearing grey. So as you've seen, inspiration can come from all kinds of places, and so I definitely encourage you when you're painting the characters of your army, if something strikes you that would be a fun theme to do, then go for it, because this way you're going to create a totally unique character for your force that will really inspire some narratives when you're playing games. You can imagine this miniature is going to look really cool when he's leading a whole army of crew toward their pale green. He's going to stand out nicely and white. But this isn't the only source you could go for. So for example, how cool would it be to paint a crew inspired by Predator? So something to check out. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video, and we'll see you again very soon. Dunk, why did the Croot cross the road? Why did the Croot cross the road? Because! <laughs> <laughs> Sauce. <laughs>